Sorry, thanks for watching. I'm Katie Horvath. This show is called Into the City. I'm here today with Michelle Parks. Michelle, thank you so much for coming today. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Michelle's looking for your vote. She's running in the upcoming Sarnia 2018 municipal election as a city councillor candidate. Uh, Michelle, for those who don't know you, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, so my name is Michelle Parks. I've lived in Sarnia my entire life. Um, for the past 12 years, you probably know me as a school board trustee. I'm a trustee with the St. Clair Catholic District School Board. And um, the past four years, I've been vice chair. Um, I also am a, a youth outreach worker with the YMCA. I'm married. I have two children, my youngest going into university this year. So that made me kind of want to um, step away from the school board and come into city council. I also am a youth outreach worker with the YMCA. Um, I'm a huge community advocate. You might know me from my work with suicide prevention and mental health issues. Um, so that's just a little bit about me. I've always been very active volunteering in the community. Great. Okay, great. And what made you decide to run this year for council? I know you want to step away from the school board role, um, yeah. but what specifically prompted you to run this year? Well, I, I had a lot of dealings the past four years with City Council on a few issues. Um, my main one, I think, being Jackson Pool and trying to save Jackson Pool. Um, with 2,000 signatures, we had on a petition, and I just felt that my voice wasn't being heard. Um, it was being heard in the community, but our City Council um, wasn't listening to my voice. And I just thought, you know, as a trustee, I have always been um, the parent's voice and, and answered every single question or comment or complaint that has come through to me and I found that this current council wasn't doing that with a number of issues. Jackson Pool just won, there was a few others and, and I wanted to um, bring that to city council and be everyone's voice on everyone's voice matters, right? Mm -hmm. okay. So great. Um, so at this portion of the interview, I like to kind of get uh, candidates to ask, or excuse me, get candidates reflections on the current council. Um, mm -hmm. So you've mentioned Jackson Pool. Um, so why don't you just walk us through a little bit about that whole process, um, kind of how you got your signatures together and, and what happened when you did present it. Okay, so um, there was a few of us that um, made Jackson Pool a priority. We had known it, it had to come up on council, and we thought, you know, that's, that's ridiculous. We you know we'll only end up with one um, outdoor pool in the summer, a city pool, and so we tried to save it. So we got an online petition together and also got a petition in a number of different businesses. So overall we obtained more than 2,000 signatures and myself and Darren Nesbitt um, presented it to Sarnia City Council and um, it was basically just ignored and they voted to not save Jackson Pool or put it in with the, encompass it in with the whole Parks and Recreation Master Plan. Mm -hmm. So that's coming to council this next term, this our new um, Parks and Recreation Master Plan. And I have a background in um, tourism and I'm very interested in making sure that um, we don't lose any more of our assets. So that's a huge issue for this next council as well, which made me want to run as well. Right, right. Okay. Um, so in addition to um, Jackson Pool, obviously uh, that was kind of a negative experience that you had with council. Um, mm -hmm. But on the flip side of that, are you able to comment on anything that you thought was done well this past term and, and things that you may want to build upon if you are elected? Um, hmm. Some things that were done, done well. I'm sure there were some. I think the city just came out with um, a Facebook page where they're touting their accomplishments from 2017. And um, I definitely think that there were a few. I think there's lots of room for improvement and communication with the taxpayers is one of the ones that I think needs to be improved on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Jackson Pool wasn't the only issue that our city council didn't listen to. Um, you know, I am very much in favor of internet voting. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very comfortable with doing everything online, shopping online, um, banking online, but there is a great percentage of people that aren't comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. So I felt that maybe it should have been phased in with paper ballots and the internet. Mm -hmm. um, there was a very strong majority of people that was kind of snuck in that they just eliminated that. So I felt that, that wasn't listened to. I, so I think, you know, there's some things that I definitely think the city council did well and we can improve on. But I think there is also some things that really drastically need improvement. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so in terms of Centennial Park, mm -hmm. um, this is another one of those issues where um, I've, I've found listening to just kind of my ear on the ground, what people have to say about that is another one of those divisive topics. Um, 
on the plus side, we have the work is finished now, it's complete, we have this part that's able to be used again. Um, on the negative side of that, it's been criticized for um, largely going over budget, lack of accountability. So could you comment in general um, how you perceive that project to go? And if you had been in that position, is there anything that you would have done differently? Okay, so first of all, I'm, I've been a trustee, so I'm very familiar with projects going over budget, and that happens, and it's mm -hmm. out of their control. Mm -hmm. What I found with regards to Centennial Park was how secretive it was, and that, you know, simple questions like, what was the original cost supposed to be, and how much over budget exactly is it, and what was that spent on? And, you know, instead of just answering the question that this is what we spent like this much money on this, they brought you back to reports and links and, and just not being straightforward. And, and that to me is being secretive and that to me is being sneaky. And I just, I just want direct answers, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's um, an issue, especially just stuff that I've noticed. Um, there are some like you said, straightforward questions that are being asked. Um, a lot of people don't have the time to go through, um, they don't attend the council meetings, uh, maybe there's only a handful of issues that they really have any any care about yeah. in terms of in terms of all that that city council does. Um, so if you are elected, do you have any ideas on how you could make the process of communication with City Hall any easier for the taxpayers? Well, I think what I find um, being a trustee is that people don't know the exact person to contact. So I think that's really easy. I think if someone was to email me and have a question, that I, I can't pretend to be an expert on everything, but I can I can find out who is and who you should be talking to. And that's oftentimes all they need mm -hmm. is like, Katie, if you need to know about this, then then you know the best person for you to contact is this, or if this is your question, I'll bring it to that person, I'll get your answer, and then I'll give you that person's name for you to contact next time, or if you need further information. So so I think it's it's really simple to be able to do that is to just answer the question directly. Okay, fair enough. Um, so moving into now more specifics about the issues that you are campaigning on, things that you would like to bring to City Hall. So if you could, excuse me, sorry, I'm, I'm not feeling too well today, so I, I apologize. Um, if we could get into um, overall, tell us about your platform. Okay, so overall my platform is to listen to the people. Um, I just want to be your voice, I want to listen, and I want you to feel like there's someone you can call if you have a question. Um, again, you know, there's tons of things in the community, and I can't pretend to be an expert on every everything, you know, um, but I want to listen to you, and I want to listen to your side, side of it, you know, the call drain bridge is something that is, people are very passionate about. I can't be an expert on that, but I want to listen to the people that are. Um, the fluoride issue as well. Um, I want to listen to what it is that the people want and and um, them bring their expertise to me. So that is one, just to listen and to have that person that you can call and feel comfortable talking to. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, um, you know, we've had big tax in increases and um, so controlling the debt that our city's under the past four years is one. Infrastructure is a big issue too. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we have to look at, at um, new ways of maybe creating money. Um, you know, budgeting, I have a lot of experience with, with budgets and being able to, to help um, have a surplus budget and being able to cut things that are sur a surplus um, and things that might not be needed and keep the things that we want. So I want to listen to the people. It is what we what they want and what they need and then be able to um, come up with the ways to be able to do that. Okay. Um, the Parks and Recreation Master Plan is another big thing that I, I really am campaigning on and I really want to be a part of, of, of making sure that um, we don't lose any more of our assets. Okay, um, so as you're going about campaigning and speaking with um, people in this whole process, mm -hmm. what would you say, in your opinion, are um, the three most important issues that the people of Sarnia are facing today? Well, what I'm hearing when I'm talking to people is is the debt is one, like kind of the things I'm platforming on. You know, I, I'm out in the community, and not even this past month since I've announced, I'm out in the community a lot, I volunteer and am am out there constantly talking to people and that's what I'm hearing. I'm I'm hearing that they want a council that works together for the betterment of the city. 
I'm hearing that they want um, to make sure that the debt is reduced and infrastructure is also another huge thing that I'm hearing. They want they want nice roads, um, they want things fixed, mm -hmm. and so those are the big three things that I'm hearing. Okay. Um, so we've got a bit of an issue in Sarnia with um, retaining our youth. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any thoughts on that issue and uh, maybe any ideas on how we could keep the youth that we have or once they do, like your son going away to university, how we can get them to come back home? Yeah. So that's actually diversifying our population is, is something else that um, is one of my other platforms as well. So I, in addition to everything else, have a background in tourism. Um, so, um, so tourism is really huge to me. And I think our community has such potential with regards to tourism. So it could be um, bigger secondary industry for us. Our waterfront is one of the most beautiful waterfronts. We need to capitalize that. You mentioned Centennial Park. Um, Centennial Park is a huge asset. Canaterra Park is a huge asset. So, so um, I think that um, what we can do is create jobs in the tourism sector. We can have um, businesses that are family oriented. So I hear that a lot as well. And I raised, raised kids. Sarnia is a great place to raise kids. It's a safe community. Um, it has beaches, it has um, pools, <laughs> it has everything that we need, um, but there could be a little bit more to offer for young families and for teenagers to be able to do. So that's, I'm hoping that, you know, with increasing tourism in our area, that it will increase things for families to be able to do and make it attractive for young families as well as retirees. Okay. Yeah. Um, so with your, I know you uh, mentioned you volunteer with the Suicide Prevention Committee um, yeah. and you have a lot kind of inside look on the mental health, I would call epidemic in our, in our city. Um, so could you comment on um, your perspective of the youth mental health, suicide and addiction issues in Sarnia Benton? Yeah. So I, I think that, um, you know, when I first got involved with working with suicide prevention, um, I thought that my gosh, Sarnia is is really got a um, huge, it must be way over the um, provincial average. I've since learned that it's not, it's pretty average, but it really, I think with social media and with maybe with me having younger kids, I heard maybe a lot more about it. Um, regardless, one suicide in, in a community is too many as far as I'm concerned. So I really have done a lot of work with regards to prevention and education and getting out there how many services there are available. Um, but I think it's still it's still a huge issue. I also have been working with the Sarnia Police and created a, a letter of support to have mental health workers working with the police that will go out on every call that is um, addiction related or mental health related. I think this is very important because oftentimes when police are spending so much of their day going to calls that are, are mental health oriented or addiction oriented, that, that really those people um, don't necessarily belong in jail or, or have to go to stay in an emergency um, room. So having a mental health worker there to direct them to services um, or to, you know, calm down that the situation that has called the police to be called um, will really, really help. So I think that that is a really important issue. And if I'm on council, I'll continue to, to do my work. It's kind of my passion with this suicide prevention and mental health. Okay. Um, so if there's anything else um, that you wanted to add, um, I am going to give you that opportunity in just a second here, but something that I ask every candidate, um, there's 28 of you looking for four seats. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are just learning about the candidates, really don't know who they should vote for because there's so many choices. Um, so why would you say that somebody should vote for you? Okay, so I think <laughs> that people should, uh, should vote for me because um, I have the experience. I have board governance experience, but I think this past council, the newer councils that got in maybe weren't familiar with how how a board works or a council works. So I have that board governance experience. Um, not only do I have experience budgeting in my role as a trustee, I've also been in business um, most of my adult life as well and been in charge of multi-million dollar budgets. Um, I have a strong background in tourism, which I think is really important to diversify in our population here in Sarnia. Um, so I have the experience and I have the common sense and most importantly I'm very approachable. I, I want to talk to everybody and I want them to be able to call me if there's any concerns that they have.
Okay, great. Um, so last, last and final question here, and that's um, just your final message for the people of Sarnia. What would you like to leave them with? Well, I think that I really want to leave the people of Sarnia is that I'm very passionate about Sarnia. I, I travel, travel throughout in my job and I hear, um, you know, you live in Sarnia and there's always been good things. This past four years, like people who live far away, I'm up in Godridge and they, they have heard about this past council and how the infighting was there. And I, I want to let everyone know that I have the ability to work with everyone. Um, I sit on a board of trustees right now and we are seven very unique people. Um, we come from various backgrounds in life and we don't always agree on everything, but what happens is we have a healthy, respectful debate and when a decision is made, even if I don't agree with it, I, um, I support the decision that the entire council has made and it's always respectful. and. You know, I hope to bring that to this city council, is that it's a respectful um, place where everyone can have an opinion and there's no such thing as a wrong opinion. Um, opinions are just that, they're your opinions. So um, I just want to leave the people with Sarnia, with Sarnia with that, that they can vote for me, they know that there's common sense, they know that there's experience, and most of all, they know that there's passion. Okay, great. So this has been Michelle Parks, and if you like what Michelle has to say, certainly vote for her online. Uh, the polls open and the telephone voting as well, 24-7 from October 11th through to October 22nd, the election day. Uh, again, this is End of the City. I'm Katie Horvath. Thanks for watching.